Hi and welcome to Scale Model Basics. I'm Aaron Skinner and I'm going to show you how to apply a sludge wash to your models. Now a sludge wash is a little different from the washes that we used in another video where we used oils or enamels. Those were thinned with the thinner appropriate for the material. In this case, a sludge wash uses acrylic paint thinned with water. The problem with thinning with water is if you apply that directly to the surface, it's going to beat up, it's not going to flow, the surface tension of the water is going to make, cause that to happen. So how do we fix that? We add a little bit of dish detergent. Nothing fancy, just regular old dish detergent will work. It makes that wash a little bit thicker, hence the reason we call it a sludge wash. We can apply that over the surface and then wipe away the excess after it dries. Now why would you want to use an acrylic sludge wash or acrylic wash of any kind versus the oils or enamels given that you have to add something extra to it? Well that depends on the surface that you're applying it to. If you've painted your model with enamels or oils, then the solvent that you're using could eat into and affect your underlying paint that you've spent so many hours sweating over to make your model perfect. So to fix that, you can apply this acrylic wash that won't affect that. The acrylic wash is usually so neutral that it won't affect your underlying paint even if it's acrylic. So let's see how you apply it. To mix a sludge wash, take some water. I prefer distilled or filtered water to get rid of the minerals that often come in water which could affect the paint or the wash. And I'm going to put some of it into a separate cup. And then I'm going to add a drop or two of the color I'm using, in this case German Camo Black Brown from Vallejo. And then I'm going to go ahead and mix that in before I add the detergent, just so I don't have to mix as much when it comes to the detergent. The ratio of this is, again, it's kind of a personal taste, but I'm looking at like 10% paint to 90% uh, water, or in, which is the thinner in this case. I'm going to add just a little bit more because I like it to be a little darker. You know, you're looking for that, as we have said about other washes, dirty thinner rather than thin paint. That looks pretty good. And add the detergent. Just a drop or two of it. And then you just mix that up. You don't want to mix too frantically with this because you don't want it to get all sudsy. All right, that looks pretty good. So the wash is mixed. Now I'm ready to apply it. I'm going to take a brush, dip it into the wash. And this, unlike the other types of washes that sort of flows along the panel lines, I'm actually going to brush this along the panel lines. Doesn't need to be neat because we're going to come back in and remove the excess. You can see how it's already darkening just like the uh, enamel or oil washes, the area around detail. You don't need to flow it in and around the details uh, because we're not worried about the excess like we are with some of the other washes where we're really going for neatness the first time around. In this case, we're deliberately over applying it because we're going to remove the excess later, in a little bit after this dries, uh, and the, the soap helps that process too. So I'm just brushing this on feels a little bit almost messy as opposed to some of the other, like a pin wash. So now that I'm finished applying the wash, it needs to sit for a while so that all that water can evaporate and just leave the color on the surface in preparation for us removing it. So let's see how it looks in a few minutes. It's dry now. Let's take a look at how to remove the excess. In this case, I'm going to use just a dry Q-tip and you just can rub at the areas where the excess is and the, uh, it will eventually remove. You kind of have to lean into it a little bit. It's not just remove it right away. Um, you can use the wet Q-tip for stubborn areas. I'm going to just do this, just get a little bit of wet. And like this area here, I can go ahead and just like you might use a wet brush to refine the 
the uh, enamel or oil wash, you can do that with the wet Q-tip too. You're going to go through a lot of Q-tips doing this. The sludge wash worked really well on this whippet. It can be used on any other subject matter too, but the way it worked on the whippet, especially around the running gear, gives you a good idea of how effective it is as a process to darken those recesses and create shadows. You can see there's a little bit of a sheen change on the surface where that wash had been lying, but that's nothing dramatic and nothing that can't be taken care of with whatever you top coat the model with, whether it's flat, which I'd use on the Whippet, or a gloss coat, or a semi-gloss clear. All of those you're going to apply over these surfaces anyway, and enamels and oils will create a sheen change too. They're a little bit different than the surrounding paint. That flat coat or semi-gloss or gloss coat just evens everything out and makes it look uniform. Thanks for watching. I'm Aaron Skinner. We'll see you next time.